Hello and welcome to episode 11 of the Crochet Luna podcast. My name is Claudia and I'm coming to you from the San Diego area in Southern California. It is Monday, October 16th and we are enjoying some beautiful non-fall weather. It is quite hot right now so can't wait for the weather to change so I can at least throw on a scarf or something. I mean I worked on these shawls all summer and it doesn't look like I'm anywhere close to being able to wear any of them but it doesn't matter I love working on my shawls so I will keep working away and hopefully you know the weather will turn soon and I'll get to enjoy them welcome to all of the new subscribers I am seeing popping into my um, update on my phone I just want to welcome you all thank you so much for subscribing to every one of you who has already subscribed and is a returning viewer thank you so much for coming to spend some time with me I really appreciate it appreciate all the messages and the comments left thank you for all all that all the time that you um, take out of your busy schedule to spend some time with me so I have a fully loaded episode this time so I hope that you've got your tea, your coffee, your crochet, your knitting, whatever project you're working on because I'm telling you I have lots to share on this episode. I also wanted to say that I really appreciate everyone's feedback on episode lengths. Like in my previous episode I asked you guys if you preferred the longer episodes to the shorter episodes. And without a doubt, I think everyone prefers the long episodes, though some of you said you don't, you might not watch the whole thing at once, you do prefer the longer episodes. So I'm not going to worry about time anymore, I'm not going to worry about length anymore, I'm just going to share what I've got to share and I hope you enjoy it. I also wanted to give you an update. I received a couple messages from Clarissa Beth in Puerto Rico and she let me know that um, she is okay and her family is okay, uh, their home is okay, but there's still no communications um, in her house. So she was able to get some messages out, uh, I think while she was at work. So I'm wishing you well, Clarissa Beth and, and Caroline, and I hope to see you guys soon podcasting. We can't wait um, to hear from you guys. So sending you lots of good vibes. All right, let's see, what do we have? Um, quick RA update, the hands are good. Um, I'm doing really well, I'm feeling good about um, everything right now. I'm able to crochet uh, as I want and I've been doing some moving around of my studio space here, my little crochet corner. You actually can't see it, but there's more space behind the, the shelves back here that I'm trying to set up to be able to um, do more sewing and some yarn dyeing, but that will be for another time, the yarn dyeing. I'm so excited about that. Um, so let's see. Name of the episode is Rediscovering the Artist. And this is something that came about because I um, have mentioned before, I studied art in college, I was a painter for many years, but I've moved around so much. I mean, I, my husband and I have moved around, I don't know, six, seven times, it's crazy, I know. And so that meant that I couldn't really take all my stuff with me, all my paintings and works in progress that I had. Even back then, I had a ton of half-done paintings. Um, and so I stored them at my parents' property. And they have um, since had started to do some moving around of, of things in the property, and they asked me if I could please come get my stuff. And I said, yeah. No, it's no problem and I went and I didn't realize how much of my work was stored I have lots of paintings and print um, I got into printmaking for a while I really enjoy printmaking and I have a lot of canvases big canvases small canvases and um, so I brought them home 
and I was uh, going through some of the work to see if you know what I really wanted to keep and you know I, I got rid of a lot of stuff that just is not anything that was important but I did come across the last uh, series of paintings that I did which were these very small paintings that I was able to finish in the span of about a week I have always loved and, and enjoyed painting with oil painting and that is a slow drying process and I don't mind any I don't mind it but because of where I was living at the time I couldn't paint big canvases and so I decided let me go ahead and paint some smaller paintings that I can finish you know within a timely manner and 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 it was just just to keep painting basically it was just something like an exercise that I was doing just to be able to keep painting and so that series was the last series of paintings that I did about 10 years ago actually about 12 years ago it was 2005 when I painted last and I um, at the time you know I was just stacking up the paintings and just you know doing one after the other but looking back at them now I really really like them and they're very colorful they're all have sort of a theme a, a theme going um, in this what I'm trying to say is there's a there's a couple things in my paintings that symbols that always pop up um, some of them are arches some of them are boxes and they're very abstract figurative paintings and I guess I should show you a sample of them I don't have one right here but what I'll do is maybe I'll, I'll put um, a picture or two so that you can see what I'm talking about and so I really 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 got the bug to start painting again I really did not realize how much I missed it until I was looking at these little paintings and I think part of me didn't I didn't want to dwell on the fact that I was painting less and less at the time and part of it was you know because of the arthritis I just couldn't I couldn't I couldn't do a lot and so even going down to the smaller paintings, um, it was still a challenge to do them, but I, I, I gave, basically gave it up. I didn't, didn't paint anything for, I haven't painted anything in oils since, like I said, for 12 years. So what is that, what am I rambling on about? Basically it's that touching those paintings, going through them, looking at them, really sparked a creative wave um, it's been about a month a month and a half and it's just I'm just inundated with ideas and I just have all these creative things that I want to do and I want to tie them in with the crocheting and the fiber and and everything that has to do with with what we love which is yarn and you know crocheting and patterns and things like that but just looking back at those paintings and the, that work just really just really got a lot of things a lot of gears going and I'm asking myself and this is what I'm this episode is about is about rediscovering your, your art the artist in you if you at one point did any kind of artistic thing whether it was you know painting ceramics watercolor um, you know mixed media whatever it was that you did just fill in the blank whatever it was and that you no longer do I think that if you go back and you you look at the work that you did and I and you see yourself as that artist that it just really it really um, What's the word? I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I'm not explaining myself very well, but it's about inspiration. That's what I'm saying. You could be your own inspiration. You don't have to look outside to too many sources. 
you could really look at what you've done in your crafting life or in maybe in another incarnation of yourself when you were in college or when you were younger in high school and, and be your own inspiration. I mean, we are so talented. We all have so many talents and I think we tend to minimize those talents and we tend to minimize the things that we do and, and say, oh, well, you know, that wasn't very good or, but really if you look back at the things that uh, sparked your passion for crafting um, you will find that it's like a really deep and never-ending well of of creativity so recently I went to Los Angeles County Museum of Art which I'm a member of and I went to check out the Marc Chagall exhibit that they have on and Marc Chagall has actually always been one of my favorite painters. I've always loved his work. And he was not just a painter. I mean, he did everything. Set design, printmaking, uh, oil painting, murals. I mean, he, he did so much. I mean, if you want to just get a taste of him, just Google him and you will see just the variety and the depth of his work. But I've always loved his paintings because they were very uh, colorful, they were very whimsical painter, you know. He's got, you know, he'll incorporate, you know, flying goats or flying horses and, you know, moon, moons and stars and all kinds of things that are just, it's like a dream. It's like his paintings are like a dream. And music was a big part of, a big influence in, in his life and he actually ended up designing costumes for um, the Ballet Russe, so for the Russian Ballet, and this particular exhibit at LA County Museum was to view some of the costume designs for some of these, um, for some of these ballets. And we went with my friend, I went with my friend Irene and um, Angela, hey Angela if you're watching, and um, I'll show you the poster that came with with the uh, notice that there was an exhibit and you can see he's got the violin and he's like floating up there's the roof of the houses here and this is just a brief taste of his painting and then this is some of the costumes he designed for the ballets and they're absolutely beautiful. It's an it's an gorgeous exhibit. So I, you know, was looking at some, some of the sketches and the paintings that they have that he did. And again, I was just like, I want to get back to painting. I want to do some painting. And so I was going through more stuff and I came across a magazine that I bought at the thrift store that I, actually was in a package um of crochet magazines that I bought a long time ago and I was actually gonna just donate the magazine but I started looking at it and I was frankly blown away because it's not anywhere in my wheelhouse it's about quilts it's a quilting magazine and it's called art quilting studio it's the summer 2012 uh, issue and I cracked this sucker open and Oh my God, was I blown away. Oh, I, I did not, I have zero reference when it comes to quilts. I have a couple of quilts that I have bought. I, I mean, I love quilts. I, I mean, I know what they are. I've never sewn a quilt in my life. And I have a picture in my mind of what a quilt looks like. And then I crack open this magazine and I was completely blown away. And I'll show you some samples of what I mean. Look at that quilt. To me, that reminds me a lot of like, you know, the blankets that we see in crochet. Look at this one. It's just so beautiful. And I, I can't believe that, like I said, okay. And then the colors in this scrap strip quilt are just unbelievable I love these colors I just look at this one here 
and I guess I guess these are made out of scraps wow so there's even quilts I mean I if you guys quilt and you guys know the answer to this let me know because I don't even understand how this is a quilt that to me looks like a photograph or something but look at that the detail of that is amazing. So I'm going through the magazine and I'm just completely blown away and it completely inspired. I thought, oh my gosh, if I if I could make a blanket, a crochet blanket with some of the, these colors, look at this one. It's supposed to be water and rocks and all kinds of landscaping. Unbelievable. And I'm, I'm really inspired by the palette that is in some, used in some of these quilts. Um, so again, like I said, you can find inspiration within and you can find inspiration in things not even related, not even related to yarn and crochet. You know, you can, you know, some people are heavily influenced by nature and they find their inspiration in nature. I I enjoy nature, but I'm not a nature person. I see the beauty in nature, but I don't necessarily find inspiration. I don't find it in the way other people do. But yet I can see a quilt or I can see a painting or I can see um, a ceramic bowl or uh, a sculpture and just find great joy in that and find great inspiration that just triggers so many things in my mind and that's what I've been about this past month and I have I, I've been really looking at things and looking at the creative process and, and experimenting and you know falling on my face going yeah that's not gonna work but I don't mind it I don't mind the process I've always been a process oriented por person as opposed to a product-oriented person, it's always been about um, the process and learning and wanting to find out and push the limits because I think that's where the magic happens. So that's where I um, that's where I'm at in terms of my energies right now. It's all about rediscovering the artist within and I think if you guys look deep enough you'll find that artist within yourself something I've really never talked about before on the blogcast is the fact that I started uh, a crochet group this is about maybe a year ago a little over a year ago I was looking to join a um, a crochet group of some kind but there was nothing close to my house so I um, decided to just start one and I contacted uh, the Crochet Guild of America and just started my own chapter. I started a guild here. But it's very informal. We don't do any, we don't really have any set projects or charities that we work for. We just kind of get together and crochet once a month, sometimes more than that. And it's called the Escondido Crochet Guild. I have a Facebook page that I'll link to. If you guys are ever in the area, check out the Facebook page and come join us because I would love to meet you. And um, it's usually, uh, like I said, very small, maybe three to five of us that show up. It's usually Evelyn, my cousin Evelyn, my friend Michelle, um, my friend Susie, and we have a couple other ladies that kind of drop by. And we basically go to Panera, which is like a bakery here in Escondido and we eat and we crochet and we share pictures of the stuff that we've been working on and projects so it's it's a lot of fun and one of the things that we did this past friday was it this past friday i think it was this past was it friday oh my god you guys i cannot keep track of time 
we um, decided to get together at my house because I have a winder and um, Michelle and Evelyn wanted to wind up their yarns that they purchased at the San Diego Yarn Crawl. So I said, let's, let's have a wine wind party. So we each brought, we each had two bottles of wine that we brought to the house. Well, I was already here. And I made a little dinner, a little, you know, stuff just to snack on. And we proceeded to wine and wind our yarn. And let me tell you, I am such a lightweight now. Like, I cannot drink the way I used to be able to drink. I was sitting there, and we were winding up our skeins of yarn and looking at the pattern. Um, I... I don't even know what I do with the pattern. It's called the. Um, here it is. The evening stroll cow. Okay, this is the pattern. It is a pink pattern. It was free if you went on the crawl. It's now five dollars. And in the pattern, it says. Well, I was reading the pattern. This is like after I don't know, many many glasses of wine. I was reading the pattern and I came to this thing called the BB and I'm like looking at the legend looking at the stitch descriptions and I'm like what the hell is a BB this is the worst pattern ever written it's giving me a stitch and it's not giving me this the definition of the stitch or how to make this stitch and I was like going off my rocker about this BB stitch that um, clearly was misrepresented in this pattern and Michelle says to me um that says 88 stitches that I should have 88 stitches so I put the crochet down and pushed it off to the side and I said that will be enough crochet for me for today let me finish my glass of wine because obviously I cannot drink wine and crochet and I had given Michelle a button um, a couple months ago that said, friends don't let friends crochet drunk or something like that. But it was so much fun. We had a lot of, a lot of laughs that night. And this, this cow seems to be pretty easy work up. It should be a one skein project. Um, and now I shared the yarn with you last time. It's the Stuck in Traffic yarn by um, Forbidden Woolery. So once I get that worked up, I will show you what that's all about. Moving on to... Hmm. Finish objects. You guys, I have finished objects. And the first one that I want to talk about is my Three Springs Shawl which is a pattern by Deanne of Addy Day Designs. Awesome pattern. If you want a beautiful shawl. You know, I just find Deanne's patterns really easy to follow. And I, what, the, res, the result that you get from crocheting one of her patterns is always stunning. And what I like about her work is that it's very forgiving. If you miss a stitch here or there, it's not going to make a huge difference. I think it's her way of designing is very laid back and it's very just kind of go with the flow. I enjoy, I really enjoy her design. So here it is. This is my beat up copy of uh, Three Springs by Deanne. And if you notice, it's a very long shawl. And you do end up with a very kind of like a shallow yet long and it's kind of like what I wanted and here is my three springs I only have one picture on Instagram of this shawl and it's a really crappy picture because I took it at night I'm hoping to do like a little photo shoot of it so that you can see the colors really well and I love it it's really really long I can't get this there's no way I can get this whole thing on um, on screen, but 
I'm really torn still because I I'm not so I really love this color with the brown okay I really like that but I'm still torn about the blue I think it's a great contrast but I just I don't know I'm obviously not gonna take this apart uh, but I'm gonna leave it like that so you guys tell me if you think that that goes well together but look how pretty that is this is such a pretty shawl so I'm telling you I can't wait for the weather to turn so I can start wearing these shawls so this is three springs it's very very long I used up most of the yarn that I got from Heidi at uh, Wolfie Wool I don't have much left of the yarn I have this much left of the color that I got from Heidi of, of Wolfie Wool and I had two of these uh, cakes of yarn that were over 400 gra 400 yards and I used like I said I used most of it the rest of them are yarns that I got from Goosey Fibers and I will put that I will put the links and the names of these yarns this actually is just a brown tonal and these other two I believe they're called Wizarding Weasleys and these are I don't remember the yardage but like I said I will put the links for the information of the yarn and that was living in my little my little drawstring bag that I got at the San Diego yarn crawl which is so cute I kind of went bag crazy recently you know I went I went yarn crazy on my last episode because it was like the crawl and I went to a, a fiber um, indie dye dyer festival well this time I went bag crazy I have so many bags so that's three springs and like I said super enjoyable I recommend all of her patterns she's got another one out now that is a dragon dragon tail shawl um, I'll put the name so that you know that shawl has to be made it is stunning and if you if you haven't seen Deanne's podcast check her podcast out it's really great and she talks about how the design of this dragon shawl is actually a it's actually a knitted shawl and the designer asked her to design a crochet version of the shawl beautiful it's stunning it's absolutely stunning so next I have let's see Rosina I hope you're watching I have not even posted a picture on Instagram of my urban stripe shawl I haven't posted anything except a progress pictures but nothing that uh, showed the finished product I just finished blocking it it's so pretty this is my urban stripes shawl and again it's long I'm not gonna be able to fit this whole thing on there you can see it well, I don't even know how to model this but here it is I love it 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 and if you can see here you can see sort of like a lighter colored yarn that's because I ran out of yarn and I had to finagle and end a point to my shawl and I added a, just four two four six stripes of a yarn that I had that's really pretty it's a wool yarn to go with it but I like it I don't mind it at all let's call that a design element but what I wanted to tell you guys is that a lot of times people are afraid to um, mix different weights of yarn or different contents uh, whether it's you know acrylic and wool I hand wash all of my crochet Ex unless it's like a 100% acrylic blanket I will throw it in the delicate cycle and then I will fluff dry it 
just so that it's nice and soft. But for the most part, I only hand wash my my shawls because I want to take care of them. And and so the and and so combining fibers is not a problem for me. I don't have any issue with it. And I'll tell you, this panel of the Urban Stripe Shawl is done with a hand spun yarn that I picked up at a uh, yarn festival in Long Beach several years ago. And I found the tag for the, the company, but it doesn't have any information on the yarn. And even looking up at the company, you can't even, you can't find it. It doesn't exist anymore. So I, I'm not even going to show it to you because it's not really, it's not really worth it. But I know it was hand spun and I know it's, it's wool because I, I remember talking to the, to the maker. But I'll show you the difference between the panel here and the rest of this yarn. This yarn is from Catherine of Crafternoon Treats. I have spoken about this yarn before. It came as a, um, um, it was two, it was this one and this one together. It was like two hanks of yarn that, that came together. And then I, you know, paired it up with this. So this is the thickness of the yarn that's in this panel. But not always, because ha because it was hand spun and it was roughly hand spun, I had thicknesses that were like this thick, even thicker, and then I had parts of that yarn were this thin, which is, this is Catherine's yarn. So I have fingering weight in this shawl along with the thicker weight yarn, and it works. It's totally fine. Does it bump out on the edge a little bit here because of the thickness? Yes. Do I care? No. I think it's wonderful and beautiful. You can see it here as well that it kind of like bumps out a little bit, but who cares? No one's going to see that. All anybody's going to see are these beautiful colors. And I tell you, this color here, I think, works really well with this color. So that is Urban Stripes Rosina. I love this pattern. I want to make like 20 more of these. And I'm not usually one to repeat patterns, but I have found myself repeating the blur. And I really like this pattern. And then Rosina's got a new one coming out call off your rocker which looks amazing which I'll be crocheting as well and then let's see so those are my two finished objects but going back to this uh, creative energy that I've been having this past month and a half and just having so many ideas and so many things that I just want to do and try. I finished the herb, the um, three springs and it's fingering weight, but having finished the granny stash bag, that big giant granny bag that I showed you guys a couple episodes ago. I had this idea that I wanted to do a giant granny um, square scarf and the picture was so the picture was absolutely clear in my mind I wanted one giant granny square granny stitching all around and just having the scarf be granny stitch but with just one giant granny square I saw that in my mind so clear that as soon as I was done with the three springs, I headed over to Michael's because I, um, I don't know why I was there. I'm always there for some reason, but I wasn't there for yarn, but I was, I was at Michael's and I was taking a stroll down the yarn aisle like I usually do. You know, I'll go in there and even if I buy nothing, I just want to, I saw them. some of this patent, uh, roving and this color in particular caught my eye. And it's very fuzzy. You can see it's very fuzzy. It, this is, I'm sure it's 100% wool. 
Yes, 100% pure new wool. I love this color. I just, I said, that's going to be, and here's the gray. And then the other one's natural, which I'll, I don't have it. It's all in the, in the scarf that I'm going to show you. This one is called Low Tie. So I am going to name my scarf Marea Baja because that means low tie in Spanish. So Marea Baja is my shawl. Not my shawl, it's my scarf that I made, which is ginormous. I haven't even measured it. I have, I haven't measured anything. I haven't, I just, just created. That's what I did. I didn't want to stop. I just wanted to create. So you can see the giant granny. I started with the square. This is what I started with. And then I just crocheted until I ran out of the, out of this color. And then I crocheted until I ran out of this color. And then I crocheted until I ran out of the gray color. So these three panels are what's left over from making this one. And then what I did is I moved in with a whole new ball of yarn. And I got that much out of it. And then I went ahead and I, this is actually a ball and a half, I believe, because what I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to wrap the scarf around so that you would have a block of color here. And then if you line up this color on your shoulders, then this side of the scarf is the same length. As this side of the scarf I'll pop a picture so you can see what I mean but the main thing was that I wanted to be able to have like a color here and then the two colors on the side and then have it just draped down I love oops I'm shaking my camera I love the way this turned out. It took me two nights worth of work because it's chunky and I used the, uh, you know, the big giant crochet hook. It took me no time. It was mindless. And so I finished the scarf and I thought, you know, when you look at it this way, the granny stitch is, you know, here going top bottom top bottom once you make the turn you know around your neck now the granny stitch is technically upside down and I don't care I think it looks great I mean I could make it so that you can crochet the two panels and then attach at the top maybe at you know at the back here some midsection so that you end up with all the granny stitches facing the same way but I just didn't want to stop crocheting and I think that's one of the joys of the scarf is that you start it once you did your granny square you just you know you just continue crocheting a granny stitch until you're done with the length that you want and that's it so this is my ginormous chunky scarf that I hope I can wear when it gets cold if not I'm going to make my husband drive me up to the mountains so I can wear it I know that uh, the kids like to go to this I'm not a snow person but my kids like to go to the snow so I will have to make a trip to the snow or the mountains or somewhere where I can get use out of it because I love this scarf and I like this project so so much there is no pattern written um, if you guys are interested and you guys want me to write up a pattern I guess I can try and do that it's very customizable. Like I said, you just make one giant granny square and then you just granny stitch away, you know, until you get it to the length that you want. I pretty much would um, work, I was my own mannequin. Like I would wrap it around and go, okay, I need more length. And okay, I'm gonna stop the color here. You know, like when I did this one here, I knew that this wrapped around this way and I knew that this one here 
this is one whole ball and it just matched perfectly so that the two sides of the of the of that green were at the right length and then when I wrapped it around again and I needed I think I needed like this much more so this is a new ball of yarn I just added and kept adding the rows until I reached my desired length so it's very customizable you know I'm like five foot two I know there's some really um there's some of you who are really tall and but there's some of you that are probably shorter than me so you can totally customize this 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 scarf so that was that but that's not all because about I think it was last year I was playing around with some yarn and I made a cow for my aunt and she really liked it and it was a two color cowl I don't have it anymore because I gifted it to her but I do have pictures that I can pop in but what I liked about it is I liked the versatility of this cowl that I made but when I recreated it in a different color color scheme I went down a hook size to see if I liked it better with a smaller hook and I, I didn't I think it just became too tight to, to snug around the neck but it's and it just doesn't have a name and it's such a simple stitch that it's just a half double crochet um, and I think it's a good project for scraps we were talking about scraps the last time scrappiness is happiness but I think this could be a good scrappy project so this is the, the this is the cow that I'm talking about. You start off with the, you know, the gray and then, but the back is all the fuchsia color so that you can wear it like this if you want, or you can wear it, you know, you can wear it like this if you want, or you can wear it like this. I don't know. However you want to wear it, you can wear it. It's very versatile in that sense. And I put this project away thinking, oh, I'll go back to it and I'll figure out, you know, how to write up a pattern for it because I think it's a fun little project. But man, I tell you, it's like, you know, the wheels have been churning and I'm like, you know, let me dig out that project. And I used some Karen Simply Soft that I had and these literally were scraps. And I came up with this one, which is just gray and... I had some pink and I had a little bit of the cream left, another like little scrappy project. So again, um, there's nothing fancy about these stitches, there's nothing that, you know, anybody couldn't do. I think it'd be a great beginner project, I think it would be great for scraps. Um, I'm going to start a new one actually that will have multiple, multiple colors in it. And so I, yeah, so I've got this project and that scarf that I'll write up. If you guys want me to write a pattern for that, I'll do it. But yeah, that's what I've been up to. I took a little lunch break, so I'm back now. So I can talk to you about the next thing that I've been working on. Well, it's, I guess technically it's a finished object because it's done. But it came... The idea came from this trend that I've been seeing on Instagram and everywhere for enamel pins. Um, if you are on Instagram and you see some of these project bags that people have and they'll put these enamel pins on them, I'll show you an example. I just received this one today uh, as a thank you for a purchase I made from Slip Stitch Studios, who I'll talk about later. You see that cute little lamb? So that would go on a project bag and I went looking on Etsy for um, enamel pins for crochet and what a surprise there's very limited quant you know limited number of images crochet related images on enamel pins I've seen a yarn ball with a crochet hook I've seen um, a granny granny stitch heart I've seen a couple of things but you know I 
thought, you know, again, we're so underrepresented that I just thought I would step up and do something about it. So what I did is, and again, it's like, you know, when the creativity is flowing, the ideas come and I just, you know, been working on that granny stitch bag and working on the, and getting the idea for the shawl and thinking about, I mean, the, the scarf that I told you about. And again, sticking with the granny stitch uh, motif, I thought, you know, what more universal image is there for crocheters than a granny stitch? I mean, a granny stitch square, a granny stitch shawl. That motif is so popular that it's almost synonymous with crocheting. And so I thought, I'm going to use that as my launching point. And I came across on the internet I did a search an online search and I found an image of a pattern a granny stitch pattern and I I'll, I'll look for the link and I'll so that you can see it because it, it's I didn't create the graph but um, it was part of a free I think it's like a free diagram or something that's out there so I took that and then I created text and added some other images to it and I'll show you the what it looks like so this is the image that I created as you can see it says um, yarn this is the way I read it yarn loving crochet sisters and it's a granny square diagram so based on this diagram you should be able to crochet a granny stitch but I, what I did is I uh, contacted a uh, manufacturer of enamel pins that's based here in California, and I worked with them to produce this. This is a granny square enamel pin. I hope that's in focus. Anyway, I am so proud of that. I absolutely love, love, love this pen. I um, have other ideas for other pens that I want to do, but I just, I love the idea of having an image that we all recognize and just putting it in pen form. Like I said, I love it. So that's another thing that I went from start to finish. I went ahead and did that and I'm super proud of Next, that. Next, I want to talk about the two cows running right now through through October 31st, which is the How Cal 2017, uh, co-hosted by uh, Jojo Twinkle Toes and me. And that cow is um, based on the skull filet pattern that was found on issue 59 of Simply Crochet magazine and that you can also purchase through Ravelry. I want to uh, talk briefly um, about about that pattern only because I feel so bad that uh, Cozy Girl your cozy girl on Ravelry just I'm so sorry that you, we I never even said it I never said it that the pattern is in UK terms because she had a hard time she was crocheting the rib portion of the pattern and it, you know it says double crochet because it's a UK double crochet but for us it's a single crochet and obviously it was going to be ginormous so I apologize cozy girl I hope that that's not going to put you off from working on the pattern and finishing it because it's a great sweater. But that is going through October 31st. Check out the chatter thread and the FO thread. There's some wonderful projects on there. I'm going to have some really amazing prizes for that cow. Also, the um, SST cow, which is hosted by... Um, Hannah of the Cozy Crochet Cottage and me. That is running, like I said before, through October 31st. Check out the chatter thread on my Ravelry page. 
there are some really really nice coasters being made um, the beauty of that cowl is that the dishcloth is coasters whatever you want to make out of it it's, it's such a small project that you can um, you know start and finish it in one sitting basically and you're learning some new skills with um, with Hannah's two patterns your skill level will definitely jump because her dishcloth that is on her page which is the round one really will introduces a lot of new techniques that I've never used I'm really enjoying that I have some like I said really awesome prizes for both the Hal Cal and the um, um, super simple Tunisian Cal that's going on right now all right so let's talk about some whips and as I mentioned before I got this lovely bag from Mitchell's creations she gifted me this bag and of course it's going to be home for my Hal Cal uh, sweater which is a uh, designed by Pony McTate and it was in uh, Simply Crochet Magazine issue 59 but you can purchase that pattern on Ravelry right now I don't have a lot going on with it I like I said I just started the ribbing and it is I'm just right there and the yarn that I'm using originally I was going to use a Knit Picks sport weight yarn but I started, I did a, a gauge swatch with it and it just, it didn't work with the hook size recommended for the pattern and this yarn, it was just too, I couldn't get gauge with it. And if I dropped down a hook size, it was just really stiff. I didn't, I just didn't like the look of it and the feel of it. So what I did is I went ahead and I'm using this yarn, which is um, Omega, it's called Nevado. The company is Omega. The yarn is Nevado. Um, Omega Yarns is a Mexican company. They are known for high quality, uh, high quality yarns and a huge selection of different colors and different kinds of yarns. But I picked up this. I picked up at the at the San Diego Crawl. It is a nylon. I believe it's a polyester, 12% polyester. 88% acrylic yarn it's working out beautifully I don't know if you can tell but there's a little bit of like a, a sheen to it it's very soft it's really really soft it's really nice and I've got this stitch marker here which is my little pumpkin stitch marker I'll tell you a little bit more about that in acquisitions and I, I'm actually hooking this up with not the recommended, I think, or am I using the recommended size? No, I'm doing it on a four millimeter hook. The pattern calls for a five and a half millimeter hook, but I went down to a uh, four millimeter hook to get gauge. Even though this yarn is supposed to be sport weight, I don't know if I'm just crocheting a little bit too loose or maybe it's a little bit thicker than that I'm sorry I apologize the pattern calls for DK weight yarn and this um, in order for me to get gauge I had to go down to a four millimeter hook but I'm still getting a lovely stretch in the fabric it's very soft so I am I'm good with that that is my work in progress that is my only newly started work in progress because the only other work in progress that I have right now is my um, socks that I haven't touched in a couple months which I'm hoping to finish uh, this week so that I can get started on my second pair of socks so those are the only two things that I have going on which is pretty incredible, right? I mean, I don't have 20 projects that I have to finish. I just have to finish my sock. And then I want to, you know, finish my sweater. And then I have several other patterns um, that I want to work on. 
One of them is that cow that I told you, but I have nothing started on it because, you know, I can't read patterns when I'm drunk. So I have to sit down when I have a little bit of a clear mind and just get that going. But that's all I have. I don't have anything else, really, which is pretty good. Uh, this past weekend, no, two weekends ago, I went to the Vista Fiber Festival. And I, I have been going to that Fiber Festival for the last three years. It's very small, a lot of local dyers and weavers and um, guilds are there. I met the people from the, the, um, um, the knitting machine, knitting machine guild, I guess it's called. And they have their really long um, machines and they're just, you know, knitting away. One lady was making um, a beautiful scarf. And then this other lady was doing color work with it. It's pretty cool. So I might go check that out because I'm, I've been watching Gerard's podcast uh, from the Hand Me Downs podcast. And he got a little uh, circular uh, machine to make socks. It makes a tube and then you would have to add, I guess, the heel, toes, and cuffs. And I know, and I've been watching Amber from the Yarn Hoarder podcast, and she has a more substantial knitting machine that on her last episode, she's like, look at all these socks that I've made. And she's got like a dozen pairs of socks, a dozen pairs of socks. It's pretty amazing. And I have no issue with using knitting machines and, or people thinking it's not knitting because you're using a knitting machine. I have zero issues with that. Let me tell you, I think if I got a knitting machine, I would be knit, I would be cranking out some socks. But I did wonder, and I do wonder if, you know, if you're a knitter, you're obviously going to put in your um, toes, heels, and cuffs, you're going to knit them. I'm wondering if you can't knit the tube and crochet some toes, heels, and cuffs. So if anyone's done that, let me know. I would be super interested in finding out whether you can do that i have a book and i'll share it with you not on this podcast but another podcast which integrates crochet and knitting and it's called knitting loves crochet i just have to find it so i just it just just popped into my head where it integrates really nicely um like uh knitted scarves with crochet flowers and different things like that i think that's great i think that bringing th those two things together definitely there's there's a place for it. But yes, I went to the Fiber Festival and I um, had seen on Instagram that Slipped Stitch Studios, which is a California, a Southern California based company, was going to be there with their booth. And I was so excited because I'm a big fan of their project backs. It, the owner is Laura Lundy. And she was there and I was really excited to see all the bags and let me tell you they are so so cute and I I bought some and I told her I mentioned to her that I have a podcast and she was so lovely and said you know let me know um, you know if you you know she was I'm always willing to promote I, I really want to be able to help out and she even donated some prizes for the podcast wait till you see what I have for you guys first let me show you um let me show oh. let me show you the bag that she created follow me obviously have good taste <laughs> I thought that was so cute. Okay. I um, have been eyeing some of these smaller uh, bags that she had. And so I picked up... I picked up three of her smaller bags. This is the Christmas bag. With the little Christmas witches. I thought this was really cute. And, you know, they're pretty roomy. What I liked about this bag is because of the 
the size of it, you can put a, a skein of yarn in there and crochet a pair of socks, I think. I don't think there's a problem with that, but this is my Halloween bag. And then I got two more. I got the kitty one and I got the flamingo one. Isn't that cute? And like I said, I'm putting together some really awesome prizes for these um, crochet alongs. So you definitely want to join the crochet alongs that are on my Ravelry page because you might end up getting one of these beauties. But what she gifted the, the podcast was, and I bought, because I bought one for myself. It's these. These are magnetic place keepers. So what you do is when you're reading a pattern, you can uh, let me pull one out real quick. And she has a video on YouTube that you can use that shows you how to use it. So these are magnetic. You can see there's magnet there. And you put it on your pattern and it kind of keeps your place and then you can you can pull this down so that you can keep place of where you're at in the pattern and it comes in three different sizes a small medium and a large I thought that was such a great idea here here's a small and here's the medium and here's the large well she gifted me three of these magnetic placeholders so that I can give them away on the podcast and this one's got the Grinch you see that the Grinch and then I have um, there's some rustling going on here well you know what I won't take them out you basically get get the idea because they're 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 all like this they're all three different sizes and I'm not gonna get them out now because I'm putting the prizes together and I'll show it to you when it's all put together as a prize package but you'll be getting one of these if you uh, are a winner in one of the crochet alongs. And then she had these really cute stitch markers. They're like little glass balls. They're little glass beads and they have something inside and these glow in the dark. So... I have those that I got, but that's not all, that's not all. I really went all out. I saw this bag and I thought this is the perfect bag for me to take when I travel. And this bag, I forgot the name of this bag. It's called, the, oh, the Go Crafty Travel Case is what the name of the bag is. Has over 50 pockets so that you can put your hooks, your scissors, look at it. All of those are pockets in there. And then in the front, you have this pocket where you can put a pattern and you can see it. And there's more pockets in here. Over 50 pockets are in here. Then... It comes with a strap so that you can use it, you know, like a, like a, like a purse, basically. But look at the pattern. These are kitty donuts. Kitty donuts, you guys. Like, I don't, I don't like donuts. Like I've said before, I don't eat donuts. But I love the donut motif. And I love kitties. And how can you pass up kitty donuts? You just can't. You just can't pass it up. So I got this for myself, and I got the witchy bag for myself. And then I have got, she did a, she did an event on Facebook Live where she was basically showing the bags that, um, it was like a, an event to, to sell the bags at a discount. And I picked up, I picked up some really nice bags. I picked up, this is like one of my favorite bags. It's like a little tiny bag. And it says, who are these children and why do they keep calling me mom? <gasps> I thought that was so funny. 
and it's a really pretty color little gold birdies and and little gold writing and the inside is gray and it's got two pockets in it more than two pockets no yeah two pockets inside so i really really love that and i got some other ones for um like i said for giveaways here's another one that you might might like I thought that was really pretty very vintagey looking so I got stuff from Laura at Slip Stitch Studios which Laura was so nice we had a really lovely conversation I you really get the feeling that she gets takes a lot of pride in her product and you know making a beautiful bag and um, if you go on their website you'll see the range of just it's an enormous variety of not only sizes of bags but uh, different um, fabrics and every Friday they have a uh, a new fabric debut a new bag debuts almost every Friday and they've done Outlander and they've done Game of Thrones and they, they've they've done it all so that is uh, Slip Stitch Studio and the owner, like I said, is, is uh, Laura Lundy. Next, we have, I went back, we're talking still about the Vista uh, Fiber Festival, and I came across another um, alpaca farm, but this is not the same one that I visited during the crawl. This, this one's a different one. It's called a Simpler Time um, Alpaca Farm. And they had a pack of yarn, of course, but then they had this. This is mohair. And this is mohair, let's see, 13% wool, 97%. Wait, what? I think I'm reading that wrong. Hold on one second. Okay, I was reading that wrong. Okay, 78% long brush mohair, 13% wool, and 9% nylon. So, this is such, look at that. Isn't that a beautiful color? I'm looking to blend this mohair with something and make something really, really beautiful with it. And it's really soft. It's very, look at, it's very mohairy. <laughs> I bought that and then I bought, I went to the yarn over truck ladies because they were there. They're always at these kind of festivals. And I saw, I saw a contour shawl. And the contour shawl is a pattern that was just put out by the ladies from the Crochet Project and it came out a while ago. I bought the pattern, but I have not had the right kind of yarn that I thought would look good with that pattern they happen to have one already made so i got to see what the shawl looks like and they had it done not in the colors that i picked in a different set of colors but i loved it i love the way it looks it's got um i believe some front post uh, double crochets us double crochets that really give a nice texture to the shawl and i found this color which is called Gumball Sprinkle by Western Sky Knits. I thought this was really, really beautiful. There's some really pretty blues in there. I love, look at that, the really just very nice co colors. This is the tag for the company. And then I thought I would pair it up with this yarn, which is called Marie Antoinette from Yarn Love. Here's the company. This is just a green. It's a tonal green. But if you put it together with this, I think that these would look stunning. Now, this one here has cashmere in it. It has 10% cashmere, 10% nylon, 80% superwash merino. 
So this feels super soft. This is like butter. This feels really soft as well, but I don't think this has cashmere in it. This has, oh, I lie. This has 70% uh, superwash merino, 10% cashmere, and 20% silk. So for some reason, this still feels softer than this one, and this one's got silk in it. But anyway, I thought that would be really stunning for a contour shawl. So I'm hoping to work on that. And then, as I was telling Michelle and Evelyn when they came over for the wine and wine party, I bought a yarn on Etsy. And I'm not going to lie to you. The only reason I bought this yarn is because I thought the logo was so stunning. And I wanted to see it in person. It's called... Um, Astrea Maris yarn. They're, they're from Brooklyn, New York. I mean, the color is beautiful and the yarn is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But what hooked me in was the visual of the logo. This is the logo. I absolutely love mermaids. I love mermaids and mermaid things. I think this was so beautiful. This is the company name. And this is the yarn. Notice I, sh I show you the logo first only because I tell you I was really suckered in by this uh, beautiful graphic. So this is the yarn. It's very pretty. Very pretty. This is 100% superwash merino, 450 yards of fingering weight yarn. Very colorful. The packaging is really pretty on this. She takes a lot of pride in, her, in packaging her her product. So that that's my acquisitions. That was my, I guess I should have said, welcome to Yarnopolis because this is my Yarnopolis segment. But I'm not done yet because this is the yarn part of Yarnopolis. But now we're going to look into what else I got. I had to take another break because I had to pick up my kids from school. So I am back now from picking them up. And let's see if I remember where I left off. I wanted to share with you um, another purchase that I made, which was the stitch markers. I showed you the one, here it is, I showed you the one that was attached to my Cal Cal, which is the little pumpkin, right there, super cute, and I purchased it as a set of six stitch markers from a company called The Crafting Treehouse, and I've devised, because you guys know I have a hard time holding little things up in focus. I have devised a new way of showing things off like that. Ta-da! So these are the other stitch markers that I bought. It's pretty cool, right? <laughs> and here is her card. The Crafting Treehouse. This is the front of it. She's done lovely work on these. And actually, these were the knitting stitch markers that just have, like, the little round ring. And I, and I messaged her, and I said, hey, can you make them as progress, creeper, progress keepers? And she had no problem with that request. So I was really happy to receive those. So that's that. I think that is the end of your Yarnopolis. No, it's not. Oh, my God. I totally forgot. I saw this also on Instagram and I let me just show you this um, how cute is that is that not adorable it is from a book called Animal Friends of Pika Pau and it is by Yan 
Schenkel, who is an Argentinian professional crochet toy designer and a designer of Pika Pau. This is the book. This book is on pre-order on Amazon. I just happened to see when she posted something about ordering it on Instagram. And that's how I was able to get this book. Um, it is beautifully photographed. I'm trying to get to the picture where it has all the different animals that you can make. Already my daughter's like, I want the puppy and I want the unicorn. Give me a second. I usually mark my pages, but I guess I didn't do it on this one. Okay, I saw this guy. This is the little crocodile, and I thought, oh my god, he's just too cute. And then I'll show you. Oh yeah, this is so cute. The rhinoceros with the little embroidered top. So cute. And, okay, this is the puppy my daughter wants. And a unicorn. This is the little puppy. That's the little puppy with the bow tie. And she wants, and that's called Daniel Jack Russell and Robin Unicorn. Okay, Robin Unicorn is the cutest thing ever. So that is this book here. So happy to get it. And like I said, I'm really interested in making the, the dinosaur. I mean, not the dinosaur, the dragon. I think she's so cute. But yeah, that's what I've been up to buying um, buying this past month and, and acquiring. Now moving on to, oh my goodness, you guys, I got something amazing. I got two amazing gifts in the mail. Amazing. There are no other words for it, but amazing. I, um, oh, there's something else I need to talk about. I got a message from Haley, who is Haley on Ravelry. She's the lady that I told you about several episodes back, lives north of the 60th parallel up in Canada, in Yukon Territory. She sent me a message. She said, you know, I'd like to send you something so you get a little taste of, um, of what it's like to live up here. So she put together a package for me that I received. And when I opened it, I was blown away. Blown away. It is such a thoughtfully put together package that I just I'm overwhelmed I'm overwhelmed look at my crazy hair I'm overwhelmed with this package that I received she hand dyes yarn and she sent me um, a hank of hand dyed yarn look at that beautiful gorgeous color there are no words except that. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And it smelled when I took it out of the when I took it out of the package, and it still smells absolutely heavenly. But that's not all. Look what she hand beaded for me. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, I think this is one of the most beautiful stitch markers I have ever seen. It is absolutely perfect. And she says she did that herself. So she hand dyed the beautiful yarn and she did that herself. So I'm really happy with that. Love it. I love it. I can't wait to use it. Then she put together a package that she called Yukon Sense. You can't see it. But it's these little tea bags. And inside she put different... Um, Ooh, it smells so good. Different things. Here's black spruce. And these are all things that grow there. Yarrow. And this is wild chamomile or pineapple weed. Oh, it smells 
so good, you guys. I went ahead and snuck in a cup of the Labrador tea. That was really nice. But yes, yeah, so she made these for me. And, oh, I forgot to show you this. This was her inspiration picture for that yarn that she dyed. Isn't that beautiful? And she says that that this red here, this beautiful red um, grass or whatever the plants, they only last about two weeks like that. But I thought that was gorgeous. And then she sent me this lovely, lovely, lovely card, which is a watercolor by Cynthia Hunt called The Light. I have an absolute love of watercolor. I am a watercolorist. I've watercolored for as long as I can remember. I have such a love for the medium. And when I see things like this, and actually Faye from the Crochet Circle Project sent me one as well. That was a beautiful watercolor, which I don't remember if I shared it or not. But that's just gorgeous. So she sent me that beautiful note. And she sent me um, a soap that is called Yukon Wild Rose. That was really, it just made everything smell wonderful. It was absolutely delicious. And along with that came this really cool sticker. I love stickers. I put stickers on everything. If you see my, my planner, My journal that I use, it's covered in stickers. I put them on everything. John Snow! <laughs> and I put stuff on the inside. I just, I'm always, the way I do things is I, if I see an image that I like, I just slap it on my book. I'll slap it on a page because I just like looking at stuff like that. But this is such a, whoops, that was, I just dropped it. That's such a great sticker. So thank you so much, Haley. I really, really loved my package. I only had the one tea because I was afraid that I was going to end up drinking it all before I podcast it. So now I can go ahead and enjoy my, the rest of my teas. But thank you so much for thinking of me and for putting together such a lovely package. Then I, um, Melody from Melody Crochet and I decided to do a little mini swap and Again, I was blown away. Absolutely blown away. Because, you know, she is quite the little crafter. I mean, she's quite the artist, Melody. She's like no joke, you guys. Multi, super talented. She yarn, dyes yarn. She paints. She does stitch markers. She does... Uh, I'm sure you did this, right, Melody? This beautiful... Um, card that you put together. I love it. This looks like a handcrafted card. It's absolutely gorgeous. And she sent me a little mini skein of, of yarn that she probably dyed. It's like butter with this crafty hooker. I just want to show you guys everything. You know why? Because I think I, I so appreciate the fact that people have taking the time to gift me something that I just really want to share that with you and share the joy that I have received from getting these things that are very precious to me. Like I don't have a lot of mini skeins. I've started a little mini skein collection, but look at the colors in here. They are absolutely gorgeous. So, so pretty. But not only that, she made me this. Look at that. She painted this. She painted this bag. I love it. And, of course, you can't have a Texas bag without a cowboy hat, right? So you got this little cowboy hat stitch marker. Thank you so much, Melody. I really love my bag. And now I can use it. Then, uh, out of the blue, too, um, 
I got a message from Amy who said she had a little something for me and she sent me the most beautiful card as well I love cards and stationery I love them this is a work of art this is hand painted isn't that beautiful it's Chinese brush painting in watercolor by Grace Lei Wok Pao. Here, I'll show you the, because I'm sure I've butchered that name, because you guys know that's what I love to do. But I got such a kick out of this card, and Amy, I hope that you, um, don't mind me reading this, but I love how you wrote this because I was laughing and I shared it with my husband and he got a kick out of it. But she says, Claudia, I found this little bag in a friend's booth at Oregon Flock and Fiber Festival. It looked lost. It told me that it belonged with Claudia in sunny Southern California and had no idea how it ended up in Oregon. So I'm sending it home to you. Enjoy. Green hook. She's She's Green Hook. Um, Amy was Green Hook on Ravelry. Sent me this adorable Notions pouch. I had stuff in it, but I took it out. Look at this cool little Sugar Skull Notion pouch that she sent me. I love it. But I got such a kick of how she wrote that cute little note. And I shared it with my husband. Like I said, he thought it was so funny. But yes. The little bag is now safe and sound in sunny Southern California. Thank you so much, Amy, for your kind gesture. I love it. Okay, so that's the gifts that I received. And thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who um, has sent me stuff. I, I, I just never imagined when I started podcasting that people would think to take time out of their schedule or even think of me in um that it would be important enough for people to think that they could that they could uh share something like these things with me and i i guess thank you so much to Haley and to amy and to melody i really appreciate everything that i have received but now let's get to some what should we do? Pattern Palooza or let me talk about uh, the the giveaway that I have from last from the last episode that I ran. It was a giveaway for a book that I had picked up at a garage sale, and I. I was really touched by the fact that you guys didn't think that it was kind of a scuzzy thing to do for me to offer this book up that I found in the garage sale. It's this one right here. And I did get contacted by several of you that you were interested in the book. And the person who, uh, the person who said they wanted the book, uh, her name is Sandra, Sandra Christensen. And I'll put the name below. And I had commented back on Sandra's um, when she said that she wanted the book that she, the book was hers and to please email me I have not received an email from Sandra Christensen um, since I last podcasted so I will I'm hoping that she will see this episode and email me you can email me at, at crochetluna dot claudia at gmail.com and I will put this book in the mail for you if I don't hear back from you in the next couple weeks I'll give you two weeks from today um, is when I will move on to the next person on my list because I have a list of everyone who was interested if I have not heard from you Sandra in two weeks I'm gonna have to I'm sad, sad to say I will have to give the book to the next person in line on the list okay so Go ahead and email me so I can get that out to you. Next, I want to tell you guys how, uh, let's see, how much I missed not doing a giveaway last time, except for the book. I really didn't do like a giveaway on the Ravelry group. 
and I want to go ahead and do a giveaway for one of the crochet Luna pins that I created so if you're interested in winning one of these pins I will put a prompt on the Ravelry group and you can answer a question for me and then you will be eligible to uh, win one of the pins I want to also do one for the YouTube subscribers if you are interested in winning one of these cool pins leave me a comment on this video telling me that you're interested please be a subscriber to the channel and I will choose a winner from everyone who comments these pins I will be selling them actually because I, I was I couldn't just have one printed I had to actually print um, a, a quantity of a hundred so I have pins that I want to give away on the podcast as giveaway gifts and if you are interested in purchasing one of these pins I will uh, list them on my Etsy shop I have an Etsy shop that basically it doesn't have anything in it right now but it will have possibly by the time you see this episode it, they will be there if not check this week by the end of the week they will be there and I will be going ahead, going, going ahead and selling these cute little pins if you want them. And then let's see what else. Okay. Let's do some pattern palooza. Are you ready? Are you ready for some pattern palooza? Because I promised you I would talk about the patterns that I got from the San Diego Crawl. And that's... I have that I have that and I have a couple that are, that were not from the crawl. But these patterns should I talk about the free patterns first or the paid patterns? I think I will talk about the free patterns first. All right. The first one that I want to talk about is called the tea house wrap. I don't know if you're familiar with this pattern. Look at my crazy hair, you guys. Oh my gosh, my hair. A completely side note, okay? Because I'm having a little bit of a hair dilemma. I basically went gray on the top of my head when I was, since I was 18 years old, I've had the top of my head has been gray. So if I never colored my hair, my whole top of my head would be gray. So it's been a battle of coloring my hair every three weeks. Not when I'm on top of it, but I've gone as long as several months to like five months without coloring my hair. When I really rebelled against the gray, I'm like, that's it. I'm not coloring it anymore. And I'm just going to go gray. The last time I did that was last December I told my husband I'm sorry honey but I cannot deal with this coloring of the hair anymore it's just gonna be great and I'm gonna look like storm from x-men it's gonna be super cool don't worry about it so he's like whatever Claudia we're standing to pay for some gifts at a retail store I'm sure she didn't even look at my face but all I heard was would you like the senior discount and then I was looking at her, and then she looked up, and she saw me. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. And then my husband started laughing. So then I immediately went home and colored my hair. But I tell you, it's such a drag. Every three weeks, I've got to color my hair because my hair grows fast. And like I said, all the top of my head is gray. So... Do I make the stand again and just let it go gray or do I keep coloring my hair? And I thought, I was even telling him, you know, I'm thinking that maybe I should just, I'm going to go gray, but I'm going to cut the hair short so it doesn't look so crazy with the black. And he, he would prefer me not to cut my hair because, like I said, I, I mean, it grows fast, but still, I don't look good with short hair. I have this, like, big fat face and I end up looking like a poodle with the short hair and because it's curly but yeah I don't know what to do I don't know what to do with this hair oh my god all right moving on calm down Claudia the pattern is called the tea house wrap 
really pretty. I really like it. Look at this. It's a good picture of it. And the website is Two of Wands. Check out Two of Wands. Their patterns are gorgeous. I will put the link. So this is one of the one of the shawls that I saw on the crawl. The next one is by Drops Design, which is called Drops Design uh, 104-11, because you know Drops is always good about putting these very creative names to their designs. It's like a wrap. I saw this at the alpaca farm. It looked really pretty done in alpaca. It's like a giant scarf, and it's got these like little things hanging off of it. Next pattern that I saw that was adorable, it's called Mon Petit Mouton. It is by a French designer, and it's just a little coaster, but I really, really loved it. It's just a little sheepy coaster, and the pat this is a free pattern, so I don't feel bad about showing you this gives you but the dimensions for the cutouts for the felt that you put on the coaster to make the little sheet face so that is that which I thought was really cute and that was a free pattern then next we have the Juliana wrap and that is designed by Rachel Lintern very, very, very pretty. This is a Juliana wrap. It looks like that. It looks very versatile. Like you can put the edging or not. If you don't want to put that edging on it, I don't think you have to. So that's another nice free pattern. Here it, here it is, another picture of it. thought that was really cute. Moving on from those, I will show you, I won, um, I won something, but I really, it was more like, oh, you're the crocheter, here you go, but I really appreciated this because these two patterns are gorgeous. One is called the Nova, oh, this is for the, from the ladies at the Yarn Over truck, I think. This was designed, it says Nova, a design for the Yarn Over truck by Julie Blagojevich, Blagojevich. Why do I even, why do I even try and say people's name, you guys? This was, this is not a free pattern. This pattern is six dollars on Ravelry, but it's a beautiful wrap. Yeah, this is gorgeous. Thank you, ladies at the yarn over truck. That was lovely of you to gift me that pattern. And then this one was really interesting because I saw a knitted version of this. Somebody was wearing the knitted version of this and it looked fantastic. I'm just afraid that because of the boobage that this will not be flattering on me. But I'll show you what it's, it's called One Loop Shy. And it's also a paid pattern, but it's sort of like this half wrap but you see the boobage here i i don't think that that's gonna be flattering on me but some maybe one of you guys will like it so i that is another pattern this is paid that we received um during the crawl and then um i found a that's it for the paid patterns I found a free pattern that is not part of the patterns from the San Diego crawl that I just showed you. It was completely independent, but it's gorgeous. It's by, it's from Furls Crochet, and it is this triangle scarf, which I thought was really pretty, and it's by Lauren Epolite. She actually is, she heads uh, Creation 8, Creation Crochet, what is the name on that site? She has a website where she posts a lot of free patterns. One of the first patterns that I 
made obsessively when I started crocheting beyond the scarf is a pattern by this designer and I will post it for you because what it is it's a cowl that you work it's chevron cowl you work it into it's like a flat and then you join it and the chevrons it's like three colors and then a solid white it's a beautiful cowl and it's a free pattern and I will I will link that I don't have a picture of that but she must have designed this for furls and I love it I love it all right so let's see let me make sure I've covered everything because I think I am at the end I told you I had a lot to talk about I have so let me tell you I'm not gonna be surprised if this is not a the good two and a half hour festival okay. oh I did want to say something about the Ravelry group yeah there's two things I want to talk about actually three things I want to talk about before I go I want to thank you guys who have introduced yourselves and I have three people that have just recently introduced themselves and I have not responded to your introductions but I just want to say Hi, and thank you so much for joining. And that is Ruby Plaid, Odd But Avid, who I think you're odd but nice. I think you go by a different name on Instagram. I think you, I know who you are, though. And uh, Chi Chi Sweets, which I love saying that, Chi Chi Sweets. So thank you, ladies, for introducing yourself um, on Ravelry. And I will get back, when I get back into Ravelry, I will um, respond to your introductions thank you so much for taking the time for doing that I also want to say that um, let's talk about socket to me um, socket to me is a really popular thread on my page and I really appreciate the time and the effort that everyone who participates on that page puts into it I want to um, really thank Faye from the Crochet Circle podcast for putting an amazing review of the crochet the crochet this crochet sock book by Ron Strong the step into crochet review that she did her lot her last podcast was about reviewing that book and let me tell you she does an amazing job she's such a pro at reviewing she's crocheted three pairs from of, of the different socks in that book with different yarns so that you can get not only a review of the yarn but a review of the pattern and she put a nice post on the socket to me thread with a link to her blog post so if you really want to get a good idea about crocheting socks about the book about the yarns um, head over to the socket to me thread and click on that link and also watch our podcast because there's it's one thing to see pictures of a sock and another thing to see someone interacting with the sock and telling you what they think about that yarn and about that pattern she's done an amazing job so I really want to thank Faith for that and um, highly recommend that you go check out not only the podcast episode but the blog post and in talking about Faye, I want to tell you guys that we are going to be running on October 27th, I believe. I will correct it if I'm not right. A uh, hashtag Friday is Dye Day, where we will be sharing our dyeing experiments. I'm ready to go. I ordered my kit with, uh, this is citric acid. It's got four dyes here, and I ordered, actually bought more dyes because... I don't know. I was at the crawl and they had, I was at the Vista Fiber Festival and this lady had dyes so I bought some more. But I, and I have my mask and I have my dye pot and I have my gloves and I have all, I have everything I need to dye on the 27th. I have yarn. So Friday is dye day. Come join us if you want to, if you want to just take a ball of wool that you have in your stash and some food coloring go ahead and do it join us I that's how I did my first um, little dye experiment but yes I am ready to go with Friday is dye day and I think that will about do it so again I will have 
just a quick recap I will have a giveaway on Ravelry and on YouTube for the crochet pin I will wait two weeks I until um, Sandra Christensen contacts me if not I will move to the next person on my list for the giveaway on the Afghan book and then I will have prize packages put together so that you can see I'm looking to pot have a Halloween um, episode so that is I believe Halloween is on Tuesday so I'll have an episode either that Monday or that Tuesday that will have the prize packages that I will be giving away they're gonna be good I'm telling you you don't want to miss entering in those FO threads because I've got some good stuff I really really do and then uh, so that about does it except I'm gonna give you your your jar of joy quote for the week let's see what we get this week this is a quote by Charles Darwin it is not the strongest of the species that survive nor the most intelligent but the one most responsive to change. Thank you so much for watching. I am Crochet Luna everywhere on the web. I am Crochet Luna on Instagram, Ravelry, Facebook, and my blog is Crochet Luna. I want to thank you again so much for stopping by and spending some time with me. So take care, big hug, crochet on, and I will see you soon. Bye.